Corey Erdman and uh, Morgan Campbell here with you in uh, the Fight Network studios. And uh, as you just saw, if you are promoting Deontay Wilder, if you have a hand in Deontay, uh, any kind of stake in him, you couldn't have drawn up a better result and uh, post-fight activity uh, <laughs> than what we got at the Barclays Center on Saturday night after Deontay Wilder knocks out Arthur Spilka. You get the confrontation with Tyson Fury in the ring. Yes. Uh, the highlight package, uh, the buzz that you can send around all the websites, all of it is perfect promotionally. Yeah, I'm, everything except... Uh the fight up to the point where the knockout occurs. Because yes. that was pretty even. If you're trying to market Deontay Wilder as uh, the next indestructible heavyweight, uh, the first few rounds of that fight didn't really bear that out. He had to do a little, well, not more than a little bit of work. He had to do a lot of work in figuring out Archer Spilka because Archer Spilka was uh, pretty awkward and often effective when he was coming forward throwing these looping left hands. Um, yes, but the end result, uh, the one-punch KO, plus the completely spontaneous run-in by Tyson Fury, which was not planned in any way at all. It just happened organically. Um, all of this stuff helps sell Wilder, um, not just in the U.S. The confrontation clearly helps him sell in the U.S. because, uh, let's face it, uh, boxing is a sweet science, but it always pro uh, profits and benefits from a little bit of... Um, WWE style promotion, which is exactly what we had, um, but also raises Wilder's profile in the UK, where uh, a lot of heavy heavyweight money is these days. Uh, since we are going to go ahead and assume uh, that this was in some way orchestrated on some <laughs> level uh, by Showtime executives, yes. uh, whether they called him and said, hey Tyson Fury, would you like a ticket to this fight? Please come to the fight. We saw a lot of other uh, heavyweight dignitaries uh, yep. in, in uh, the audience on that night. Um, whether they did that or whether it was just as simple as the producer at that time inviting Fury into the ring and making that confrontation happen, what we do see is that both Showtime and Fury and his camp and Hennessy Sports are at least open to the idea of negotiating with the Showtime side. It means that they're not tethered to HBO. So if Fury goes on and wins the rematch with Klitschko, uh, retains the title, that they're not necessarily stuck over on that side, and they're open to making a fight with Wilder or anyone on either side of the political divide. And that is the beauty, um, as much, that's the beauty of having uh, a heavyweight champion who's based overseas. As much as Americans lament the fact that boxing is dying because there's no great American heavyweight champion, the fact that uh, Tyson Fury uh, is in the UK and that his TV allegiances uh, are first and foremost to UK networks and not to these American networks means he can work either side of that divide depending on which fight is best for him, which fight has the highest stakes, which fight will pay him the most money. He's, he's, he's not in a position where he has to sit here and watch all these great fights, all these great matchups pass him by because he's married to HBO and all these other guys are on Showtime or because he's married to Showtime and all these other guys are on HBO. I mean, this is looking way, way, way in the future because yes. we don't know if... He still has to beat Klitschko. She still has to beat Klitschko, and we don't know if this fight will happen. Uh, we think that it could happen, but completely theoretically, yep. uh, I think that the way that this fight played out, you referenced what happened leading up to the knockdown, the struggles that Deontay Wilder had with Arthur Spilka, which I think were directly attributed to the fact that Spilka is southpaw. Wilder yes. came out himself after the fight and said, hey, before this fight, I hadn't sparred or fought a southpaw in three years. So, you know, that is, uh, there was a lot of confusion, I think, in the ring uh, for Deontay on that night. He did manage to figure it out, obviously, but people will look at that. They will look at the fact that Fury can fight very competently as a southpaw. Yes. And I think will rightfully favor Tyson Fury in that fight looking ahead. Well, Wilder said I didn't have a lot of southpaw sparring. And again, this is, a part of that is a function of the fact that he's based in Birmingham, Alabama, where, yeah. I, where I would imagine that there aren't a whole lot of uh, just quality heavyweights walking six around. Six-foot sex southpaws. Right. <laughs> Roaming the um, grounds, yeah. And again, it's, it's one thing, for because for a training camp, you can hire help, you can fly guys in uh, to, to spar with you. Um, but just day-to-day -day work, you don't really have that. If you're not in Las Vegas, there's not this, you know, this critical mass of, of heavyweights hanging around that you can invite to the gym to spar with you. Um, and the other thing is that Fury, when you saw him fight Klitschko, what he d did is that he made a very good job, he did a very good job of making himself awkward. Um, Southpaw or Orthodox, if he makes himself awkward, uh, it's gonna be tough for Deontay Wilder because again, this is a guy, even though he's 36 fights into his career, uh, still learning on the job because he had a late start in boxing, learns quickly because he's a really good athlete, but at the same time, is he gonna learn, is he gonna solve uh, Tyson Fury 
quickly enough to win a decision or to knock him out? Uh, that's a huge question. Well, it's been a long time since we've had uh, something to debate, let alone something to be excited yes. about in the heavyweight division. But there is plenty going on right now. We'll be back with more of Fight News Now.